what it is. It's your boy Dutch the Demon, and you now watch Demon Time with Dutch. On today's episode of Prison Stories Uncut, we over East Baltimore in that Maryland Penitentiary with it, man. Now, this situation happens 20 some odd years ago, right? As your boy trapped in that Maryland Penitentiary. But before I hop off in the storytelling mode, we're gonna go ahead on and run the shout outs down for the people that have been supporting the channel through Cash App, man. First up on the list, we got the brother Robert Moore. This brother, I can't say enough about this brother, man. Lord, you support him. Big brother don't just watch, he support. Brother, make it his business to support the channel. Appreciate you, brother. Robin Moore. Definitely ain't gonna let you down. Stay locked in, chat. And last but not least, we got the brother, Stephen Wells. This brother been supporting since day one. Lord, you support him. I got a lot more stories and topics coming, brother. Just stay locked in. I got it. Stephen Wells. Appreciate you, brother. Now that we got that out the way, let's get it. Yeah, man. So when they knocked Howling the Ridge projects down, Howling the Ridge was on the east side of Baltimore. My mother had a Section 8 voucher. Her voucher, she went on here and moved out the county in hopes for a better life, better atmosphere, you know what I mean, better upbringing for me. But when we got out the county, we quickly realized the area we moved in, right, it's like a little village, like a little town. Well, that whole area was full of people from the city that just really moved out the county because the projects they from them got knocked down. Because in Baltimore in the 90s, they was tearing down all the projects. Murphy Homes, Flag House, LT, Howland Ridge, Chapel Hill, Somerset. They tearing down all the projects. So a lot of people from the Jets, they was ending up out, pushed out in the counties and shit. They section eight vouchers went that right? Yeah, we on the move this morning with it. But anyway, everybody that was out there in that little community we moved in was from the city, east, west, north, south. We might as well stay in the hood for real. Shit, it was even people from our projects that moved around there in that community. My homegirls from my court, they moved right around that motherfucker. But anyway, when we moved out the county, one of the niggas I met, right, that I got cool with, he was originally from over west, like Folk and Avenue, up that way for real. Trenches, trenches. See, I'm a little younger than him by like three years. So at first, I used to hang with his little brother for real. But me and him end up getting even tighter for real. So when they knocked the projects down, I was real young. You know what I'm saying? So I really moved around there. When we first moved out the county, I was really coming of age. That's really starting to get my feet wet for real. Slim was a little more on the porch than me. He was already hustling, you know what I mean? Getting a little money. He was getting a little money young, having a little fun young on the cane tip. But me on the outside looking then, I'm thinking he a gangster, you know what I mean? He scrapped when it's time to scrap. He token pipes. And a few niggas out that county was scared of Slim for real. Saint them swine a few niggas out, you know what I mean? But all in all, I said that say, I looked up to Slim when we was coming up. I ain't even gonna cap. And come to think of it, he had me by like five years. It wasn't no three years. He was like five years older than me. He was a lot older than me for real. Come to think of it. Yeah, about five years. I remember a situation happened when Golden Ring Mall, this was back when Golden Ring Mall was opened up. I remember Golden Ring Mall, they had put like a little nightclub inside the mall. And Golden Ring Mall was directly across the street from our house, from that little community we lived in. And she walked right over there every day. Go shopping or just walk around the mall, kick the bobo, you know what I'm saying? We was kids back then. Well, one time, I was in the house chilling. I ain't even go to the mall that day. Them niggas went over the mall and gets in a fight with the with the um, security at the nightclub they put in the mall and shit, right? They gets in a fight with the security. Security beat the shit out my man. The one I see was from over west, right? Beat them black and blue. So everybody get together, we got bats, chains, bricks, all that shit. And we marching back over to the mall. And we get in a fallout brawl with the security at the nightclub. Whooped them boys. Cause we was way deeper than them. They had to call the police. All behind Slim. It was ride for him. So we walked back home, pumped the shit, we put that work in back in the day. Just to give you a little history on how we was rocking. Oh yeah, another incident. Slim used to go over west and hustle on Fulton and all that shit with his cousins, right? Well, niggas came through, robbed him and shot him, right? But well, he was all uh, right, he survived, he got hit in his side. But that shit happened over west, over his cousin's way, so we didn't really know too much about the situation. He just knew he got shot and all that. He wasn't really telling us anything. And you know, nigga ain't gonna pry all in your business. Well, fast forward, I, get, I end up getting grabbed up catching my time going to prison and all that shit. I probably was booked, I'm gonna say a good five years before they packed me up and sent me in that penitentiary, that Maryland penitentiary, right? Now the penitentiary is located over East Baltimore. If you from this city, a lot of times that'll be your last stop. 
that even release you from there. One of the facilities close to it, be drip or what have you, right? So I end up in that Maryland penitentiary. Now, when you get down there, you're going to see a lot. It's just like being over the city jail. You're going to see a lot of niggas from the way, from the city. Because a lot of the prisons, Hagerstown, Cumberland, ECI, Jessup, it's going to be people from Maryland mixed in. It ain't going to just be Baltimore people. But when you get in that penitentiary, most of the people in there are going to be from the city. And you reunite and link up with niggas when you get down there. So i never forget this shit. When I got in that penitentiary, they had me in the dorms and shit. I was in the ITP program. They had me in the dorms. Well, long story short. I'm probably in the program for like 90 days, probably be down in the pen like 90 days. And there was some dudes on the tear from over West Baltimore. And you know how I be dudes from over West, they probably linking up together, walking together, talking together, eating together and shit like that. Not a gang or nothing like that, just dudes from over West. Well, a couple of them was in the ITP program with me, right? It was a nigga named Barney. Just like Barney the Dinosaur, dark skinned nigga goes all in his mouth, they call him Barney from over West, right? My man. Me and him, we met in the program, we get cool as shit. But Barney used to get a couple of dollars over West for real. So one day we chilling and shit, and I asked him like, well, where you from over West, yo? He get to telling me like, yeah, you know, I'm from up Fulton and all that, right? So I'm like, oh yeah, my man from up Fulton. He like, who your man? He like, I got to know him. I tell him about Slim, my man from over West for real. Soon as I say his name. He like, brown skin waves in his head with the ghost. I'm like, yeah, yeah, that's my man. He like, man, that nigga a rat, man. What you ass nigga told on my man, yo? Got my man 60 years. Wait a minute. Like, yeah, yo, that hot ass nigga, niggas looking for yo. Niggas been looking for yo. And he like, where the fuck you know him from? Out the county, out the county. He like, oh, he had been out the county, huh? And where he been at? I'm fucked up by this. And he get to telling me like, yeah, yo, you know, niggas shot him back in the day. Took the stand on my man, all that shit, man. He get to telling me, niggas took your paperwork and posted the statements of him snitching on the light poles all over West Baltimore. Had your statements, made copies of your statements, had them everywhere. Niggas walking by, snatching them off the pole, reading them. Hey! He was like, yeah, that's why yo don't come over west no more, man. Niggas trying to crack your cranium. I'm like, yo, you said he got niggas 60 years. Like, yeah, I'm telling you, on everything. Then he get to call the niggas from up his way over there where we be sitting at. Like, yo, blase, blase. Niggas coming over there. He like, yo, what's up with Joe? Blah. As soon as he say that, niggas like, oh, yo, right, yo. Blah, 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 blah. I'm like, wow, yo. Whole time thinking this man a savage. See, when you move in them little areas like that, a lot of niggas done got ran out their neighborhood. See, we moved around there because they knocked the projects down. But he was definitely hiding, living a lie. Moved out the county and be all he could be, knowing damn well he was laying low. But Barney was like, shit, Dutch, I know you ain't no yo. Don't be hanging with that nigga, man.